Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis, the Carb Addiction Doc. And today we're going to take a deep dive into understanding the concept of vulnerability to addictive behavior and what's happened with you over time, who you've become. So it's going to be an interesting take. It's something I do with, with all of my patients. But it's to understand the processing of emotional tension. Uh, let's start with an analogy. Okay, let's say uh, you're flying on an airplane and you've got two kids beside you. You've got a five-year-old and twins, let's say twins, a boy and a girl, five-year-old twins, one kid on each side of you, and you're flying along the airplane, and everybody's happy, and suddenly the cabin pressure goes down. And three oxygen masks fall from the ceiling. Here's the critical question. Forget about what you know, forget about anything else that you've been told, forget about the message at the beginning. The kids are sitting on the side of you, they're five-year-olds, you care about them tremendously, they're your children, or they're children of someone you love or care about tremendously. <coughs> they can't breathe, they're turning blue, they can't breathe. And the three oxygen masks have fallen from the ceiling. What do you do? The majority of people, irrespective of their knowledge, the majority of obese people will put the masks on the kid first. And if you put the mask on the children first, you have no oxygen, you're dead. Of what value are you to the kids around you? The reason you put your own mask on first before you help those around you is because you're useless to the people around you if you are dead. That's why the messaging is there. But so often, my obese population, almost ubiquitously, will put the mask on the people around them before they take care of themselves. Because that is integral to understanding addictive behavior. One of the incredibly powerful psychologic aspects of addictive behavior is how effective we distort reality to ourselves. Because we ultimately know that this thing that we're about, that we desperately need in our lives, this drug or this behavior that we have to do, that's so necessary to our emotional management, and yet so toxic and so harmful to us, we have to find ways to legitimate, to legitimize the access to or presence of that drug in our lives. So we have this wonderful way of distorting reality, of minimizing and tri trivializing and rationalizing and distorting reality to give ourselves permission to do our drug of choice right now, irrespective of the harm. I have the saying that addicts are immune to risk. And it comes down to what I just called the oxygen uh, mask theory. Because in life, what we love to tell ourselves is that we don't have time for an effort-based emotion management system. We don't have time to go for a walk. We don't have time to garden to the yard, to garden. We don't have time to play and rest and do things, do things that require effort and time on the back end of which is the return of the investment is emotional relaxation, emotional reprieve, and a sense of well-being, a sense of pride that builds up self-esteem and self confidence. We live in what's called a self-sacrificing environment. And almost all addicts are extremely good at self-sacrifice. Well, I would go for a walk, but right now I have all this work to do. I, my company, you don't understand. I've got, I've got all these people to take care of. And, and, and we're so busy taking care of everybody else that it becomes very convenient to use that as a pretext to provide no self-care to us. Self-care is fundamental to effective emotion management. And yet the first thing we do is we sacrifice self-care because we self-sacrifice by helping everybody else. And if you're going to address addiction, if you're going to address your chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption, not on a diet, but from an addiction perspective, you want to understand the importance and the difference between self-sacrifice and self-indulgence. Self-indulgence is where you take care of your own emotional needs first. You breathe your own oxygen first so that you're better equipped to help people around you. So, for example, if your kids come running, oh, mommy, I've got to go, daddy, I've got to... 
And you get trapped in the emotional upheaval of what's going on. You're reacting to the emotions of the situation. You're not stepping back and saying, okay, what are the issues here? Let's deal with the issues. Because you're reactive, you get trapped in the emotions. If you take care of your emotional needs first, you calm yourself down, you're able to step back and then respond to the issue rather than react to the emotion, you're going to be far more effective as a human being taking care of everybody else. If you breathe your own oxygen and you're getting clean air first, you're far more effective at helping those around you. So learning to be self-indulgent, putting everybody else's needs on hold for a moment while you do something to calm yourself down, is the only way forward out of the trap of taking care of everybody else's needs, usually through their emotions, and then having to eat a tub of ice cream or a bowl of pasta to calm yourself down. Injecting some heroin or drinking a bottle of vodka or having a pack of cigarettes to calm yourself down because you didn't have time to invest in an effort-based, time-consuming emotion management system. You didn't make the self Indul take the self-indulgent step of stepping back, taking care of your own emotions first so that you could respond to the issues of other people. Breathe your own oxygen. Be self-indulgent so you don't sacrifice yourself on the altar of the needs of others as a wonderful, uh, convenient pretext that it's okay to eat crap because you didn't have any other way of doing this. Very, very few people are selfish. Of course, there are a few uh, um, narcissistic uh, people out there that are selfish. Those are the folks that grab all three oxygen masks and breathe their own air and screw everybody else. We're not that. But most of us are self-sacrificers. And we're self-sacrificers to validate and justify doing drugs as the only option to manage our emotional needs. Become self-indulgent. Learn to step back from emotions Calm yourself down by doing something that may take a few minutes, a bit of time, figuring out what the issue is, and then deciding whether the issue needs to be dealt with or not. That is addiction transformation. And understanding the oxygen theory, the oxygen mass theory, is understanding addiction. Examine yourself. Look, look, at, look at how you live your life and ask yourself, Am I self-indulgent? Am I self-sacrificing? Am I selfish? Let's talk. Give me a shout. 561-517-0642 to set up a consult. If this message resonates with you, share it with your friends, but please hit the subscribe button. It helps us if you subscribe. It's free, but it helps us if you subscribe. And if you're really empowered, if you're really impassioned by this message, Help us by becoming a Patreon subscriber, $3, $9, or $25. It helps us to keep this production free. Patreon.com, Carb Addiction. Carb Addiction Doc. Thank you.